Okay, this is the best fudge recipe I have ever had, ever tried. I think you'll like this. And this is for Samuel's friends who asked for this recipe. It's like the fantasy fudge recipe, except tweaked, and it is the real fudge recipe. So this is what you need. Okay, you need two cups of sugar, one cup of brown sugar, any kind of work. Uh, of course, semi-sweet 12 ounce chocolate chips, we use great value. You will need, I use Mexican vanilla, you could use regular, but Mexican's definitely the best. Also, uh, imitation, now this is hard to find, but uh, caramel, caramel, We I say caramel, imitation caramel. Uh, you need a, a teaspoon of each of those. Then you'll need the jet puffed, of course, the seven ounce, or you can double the recipe and get a big one of these. The Hershey's Cocoa Special Dark is important. One big tablespoon of that. You need butter. Two sticks, actually one and a half, and then I add a tablespoon because the original recipe calls for one and a half sticks of butter, but I like, personally, I like it a more moist, so I add a tablespoon. So one and a half plus a tablespoon of butter. And then you need three-fourths cup of evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed milk, but evaporated milk. You put that all together and the another key is the saucepan you use. Do not use like a big pan because it'll cook too fast and too hot. A good saucepan like this will be perfect and it'll help keep your temperature down a little bit while it's cooking and it won't uh, it won't harden too much and it'll be nice and creamy fudge. But that is what we're going to start with. Let's go. Okay. One cup of sugar. Two cups of sugar. One cup of brown sugar. Now, we're gonna add the milk. Three-fourths cup evaporated milk. My hands are clean, I did wash them. Half a cup, plus one, boom, right about there. All right, butter in. Put the, put the oven on, the stove on medium. Throw that in there and start stirring. At this phase, keep stirring and don't stop. Okay, so as this starts to boil like this, the butter's melted. Of course, this is uh, salted butter. All that's melted, it's starting to bubble. You set a timer for four minutes, and then you're stirring. This was at four minutes, but it's, it's not now. But anyway, set your timer for four minutes and stir continuously as it is boiling like this on medium-high heat on your stove. In a small saucepan like this, I have found works best. So... We're just keeping this stirred. Buddies, our dog's barking. Sorry about that. All right, it has been four minutes. I have been stirring this. I'm gonna take it off the heat. Go ahead and turn off the stove. Take it off the heat. It's been four minutes. It reaches about 234 degrees. If you don't have the same stove I do, you can either put it in a medium high for four minutes or if you have a candy thermometer or something, 234 degrees is what you want it to go to. Now that that's done, we're gonna add a Hershey's Cocoa Special Dark, one heaping tablespoon of this, just like so. And uh, that makes it a little more chocolatey, which I like my fudge to be a little more chocolatey. So I'm gonna stir this in first, kind of get it mixed in a little bit here. And then I'm going to add this 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet uh, chocolate chips. Any brand would work. These are great value and they work just fine, although some other brand may be better, I don't know. Um, you can use whatever you want on that. And you might make your own recipe, tweak it a little bit, but this I have found is the best recipe I have ever made for fudge. So now that I'm mixing this in a little bit, it's starting to get really chocolatey, but we also need to add the, uh, 
We also need to add the marshmallow cream, which we're about to do in just a second. But I like to make sure that cocoa gets mixed in real well. All right, now I'm gonna take this Jet Puffed Marshmallow Cream, which is seven ounces. I'm going to just scoop it all out and put in here. Samuel, quit, son. <laughs> Samuel's back behind the camera. Um, but the main thing is just to kind of get it going pretty quick because you don't want to lose your heat on this. All right, so that's just about all of it. We'll put that in there. And then we'll start to mix this up. And it'll melt as it goes. And this starts really looking good too. Reminds me of an old, uh, my mom used to have a recipe for Mississippi mud. Of course, Samuel's gonna eat the rest of that uh, leftover marshmallow cream there out of that, which is good. But you just mix this up real good. I personally don't care for nuts in my fudge. Some people might. Um, I personally don't. I, sometimes I do. I mean, it, it depends. I'm not to say I don't ever like nuts. I really do like nuts sometimes, but for the most part, I've found that when I make half a thing of fudge and half of it has nuts and half of it doesn't, the side that doesn't have nuts always gets eaten first. <laughs> so it's just kind of my thought that I think people probably prefer no nuts if you're in doubt. Just don't do nuts. And especially if you're making it for a group of people, this is for Samuel's Bible Club. He's got a Bible club he started at school called The God Group. And I made some fudge for them. And they said, ooh, that was so good. Ask your dad to film him making it next time. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So that's why we're making this film of the best fudge on the planet. At least the best fudge in the United States, maybe, or Texas, I don't know. Definitely, definitely the best fudge in Cleburne, Granbury, Burleson, Hillsboro area. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of caramel extract, which uh, is kind of hard to find, but you can find it. You might have to order it online. If you can't find it at the store. And then a teaspoon of Mexican vanilla, which you should be able to find in like the, oh, in the baking section or maybe even in the Hispanic section of your uh, grocery store. And if you can get somebody to bring you some from Mexico, that's even better. We used to do take mission trips to Mexico pretty often for our church. And so we very, uh, every year we would go, we would bring back Mexican vanilla. And uh, I know there are other vanillas that people probably like, actual vanilla beans, and you can do that too. I would like to try that sometime, but I've never actually tried the uh, the natural vanilla beans where they scrape it off of the, and, and put it in there where it's just the actual vanilla bean. Someday I wanna try that, if anybody has, let me know, or if you have any vanilla beans, I've just never had any or, or done that. So I'm mixing this all up and it looks like it is just about ready to pour. So at this point, now that that's mixed in, what I'm gonna do is get my pan, which I just use a glass Pyrex pan. I like this size because it makes the fudge a little thinner. You can use whatever. Line your pan with aluminum foil then just take your fudge and just dump it right in there. And uh, try to make sure it's all mixed up good. Something I learned too that was really good that I liked, if you like salt, kind of like salted caramel or something, uh, take, Samuel, hand me that, uh, that rock salt there, that uh, Himalayan salt. Show that right there to the camera. This is Himalayan pink salt and you can grind it actually on there if you like, if you like that on fudge. Oh, it is so good. I tried it the other night just because I accidentally got uh, butter that was not salted, and so I tried to put some in it uh, with that Himalayan rock salt, pink salt, and it was so good. Of course, little, you know, it helps if it's, if it's uh, ground up the proper way. So now you just spread this out uh, to the corners, let it cool as soon as it cools, this is so creamy and so delicious. It's almost like a mousse, uh, but then it'll harden as it cools. Of course, it'll be real thin right now, but it's almost like concrete in the sense that it, uh, it goes in wet, but then it starts to harden 
as it cools off or as it dries. And then it will be delish. So I'm gonna let the kids also lick that spoon as well as the pan. So there you have it, the world's best fudge on the planet, if not the United States, definitely Grand Burla, Cleesboro area, Grand Berry, Hillsboro, Burleson, Cleburne area. All right, that's it, enjoy.